This video is brought to you by Videoblocks. Get instant access to over 115,000 studio quality stock video, After Effects templates, motion graphics, backgrounds, and much more. Check out the description for a free seven day trial. What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. Here for another camera comparison for you guys, specifically comparing the Canon 80D versus the Nikon D7200. Now both of these are mid-level DSLRs and they offer a lot of great features, both when it comes to shooting stills and videos. We're gonna be basically taking a look at the overall specifications and capabilities, then go through a side-by-side head-to-head comparison between the image quality, the low-light capabilities, and the video quality as well. So if you're debating upon which camera is right for you, stay tuned and let's find out. Now there's definitely a lot of crossover from the Nikon D7200 and the ADD from Canon. Firstly, in terms of sensor size and crop factor, they're both the same APS-C size sensors and both are around 24 megapixels. Now, one of the important distinctions between uh, these two cameras is the fact that the D7200 does not have an optical low pass filter, which is gonna generally produce some sharper looking images than the Canon, which does have one. But the trade-off of not having that low pass filter means that the D7200 is going to be a little bit more vulnerable to getting moray and aliasing artifacts, especially with images containing fine detail patterns. In terms of build and comfort, both cameras are very comfortable in the hand. There's definitely no complaints there, but there's a difference in terms of build quality and materials. The D7200 is made out of magnesium alloy, which makes it very strong and very light and uh, fairly weather resistant. The ADD is also weather resistant, but it's mostly made out of polycarbonate plastics. If you want the more durable, more weatherproof uh, camera you probably want to head for the 7d mark ii versus the d7200 it definitely feels a little bit more durable than the add now one of the big updates that canon made to the add was the autofocusing system not only is it hybrid based but all of the points are actually cross type phase detection points you have 45 points in total versus the d7200 does have a decent amount of points 51 to be exact but only 15 of those points are cross type compatible and of course it doesn't have the hybrid uh, dual pixel autofocusing system which is excellent for shooting video it's probably one of the best af systems you're going to find on any dslr and that's what the canon has right now now in terms of the low light capabilities we'll go to the side by side comparison on the high iso modes but in terms of actual numbers uh, basically the range is a little bit more extended on the nikon side you can go all the way from 100 to over 102 thousand iso not that you're going to use those extended modes but even in the regular range it looks like the Nikon has a little bit more ISO uh, bandwidth compared to what we have on the ADD side. That being said, the uh, ADD can actually do seven frames per second in continuous uh, burst mode. Now uh, the uh, D7200 is at six frame with the full sensor side, but if you crop down to 1.3 times crop, you can get to seven frames per second, which is pretty cool. But uh, generally speaking, looks like uh, for sports photographers and nature photographers, you might have a little bit of advantage on the ADD side. Now in terms of the displays and the viewfinders, thankfully both cameras have now 100% coverage on the optical viewfinder and both are really quite fantastic. This is one of the main reasons why people are going to shoot with the DSLR to use the viewfinder that's going to look directly through the lens. That's still a great appeal for many traditional photographers. And in terms of the main rear mounted displays on paper, the uh, Nikon D7200 is slightly larger and does have a little bit more of a higher dot count. But I personally think the ADD has a much better screen better in terms of color rendition really sharp looking as well and plus it's touchscreen and fully articulating which is excellent for shooting video and of course uh, taking pictures in all sorts of different camera angles which is hard to achieve with a traditional fixed mounted display now in terms of the video capabilities both can actually shoot full hd at 60 fps but there's a little bit of a caveat on the d7200 side if you want to shoot at 1080p at 60 frames per second it does have to crop down to 1.3 times crop with the full size sensor at full HD you're limited to about 30 FPS to 24 FPS and uh, both cameras unfortunately can't do higher than 60 frames per second would have been nice to see 120 frames per second on the ADD but we don't 
don't have it. Of course, we're going to take a look at the direct comparison between the video quality on both cameras very soon. But before we do that, if you take a look at the ports and connectivity options, the awesome thing about shooting video with both these two cameras is you have a uh, 1 8 inch headphone jack as well as a microphone jack. So that's perfect for monitoring your audio, which is essential if you're going to be shooting video. And of course, both of them has HDMI C uh, connection, which is again great for monitoring as well. So both are really optimized for video shooters. And lastly, in terms of media storage, the cool thing about the D7200 is it actually has dual SD uh, card slots, which is uh, fantastic for obviously redundancy and backup, or you can use it to extend the uh, amount of photos and videos you can take on any given session. So let's now get into the side-by-side -side image quality comparisons between the uh, D7200 and the ADD. That way you can judge the difference between uh, the both cameras to see which one is right for you. So we're going to take a look at both the uh, photos, the low light performance, and of course the video quality. So let's get right into it. But really on that guys, that's really it. As you can see, generally speaking, when it comes to the image quality, I would say in terms of sharpness, the Nikon D7200 is a tad bit sharper, but in terms of resolution and overall sensor size, they're so similar. There's obviously a difference in terms of how the sensors render color, and that's always gonna come down to a personal preference. And of course, if you shoot raw, uh, you can just edit the photos to whatever your specifications. When it comes to low light performance, I think both of these cameras are tied, certainly when it comes to the a low light range in terms of ISO sensitivity, the Nikon has a slight edge of giving you a little bit more options, especially on the higher end ISO settings. But in terms of overall noise patterns, I think the Canon does a pretty good job even at those higher ISO settings and they're both kind of on par in terms of overall a noise performance. Furthermore, when it comes to shooting video, I think the D7200 is pretty good, has a microphone connection as well as a headphone jack. The same goes for the ADD, but I think the ADD with its fully articulating touchscreen the excellent hybrid AF system and the option to use the full sensor when shooting 1080p at 60 frames per second is definitely a little bit more superior and I personally like the video quality on the Canon side better myself. But you be the judge. Uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, let us know in the comment section down below. Check out the links for more details and uh, one last word from our sponsor. Now, if you guys are like me, I've been searching for a long time to kind of spruce up our content and get some really high quality stock footage and a great resource definitely has to be video blocks. With the yearly subscription, you get unlimited downloads to a very extensive library from category specific stock footage to After Effects templates and tons of motion graphics to really bring your videos to the next level. And as always, everything is 100% royalty free and it's yours to use forever, whether that be for personal or commercial projects. Now for creators, video Videoblocks has just launched a marketplace where contributors get 100% commission on all marketplace sales. Now this is great in a lot of ways. This means that you can get very specific stock footage for your particular needs and buying directly from the global contributor community makes a lot of sense. Not only are you helping fellow content creators, but you're also getting access to a much larger library at a deep members only discount. Now if you guys want to try out Videoblocks service, you could actually do so free for seven days by using the link in the 
description and you get instant access to over 140 HD clips. Each clip is actually worth about $49. So that's definitely excellent for those of you guys that are interested in trying out the service. So definitely go out and check out the site, sign up for the free trial and integrate some awesome content into your videos. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for Videoblocks for sponsoring this video and we'll see you later. Take care.